Good morning and, uh, and welcome. Uh, we're going to start this session uh, with the Telefonica Chairs. The Telefonica Chairs is the, the tool uh, Telefonica has to work between the university and the company. And here we have uh, two presentations of uh, two of the university chairs. The first one is uh, coming from uh, the University of Delstow, and uh, Mr. Wald will present it. It's about the LMS and Web 2.0 uh, tools for e-learning. Professor Wiesel. Thank you. First of all, I must apologize because my English is not very good. Uh, uh, I hope it will be enough. Sorry. I hope it will be enough just to understand the, 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 this presentation. Let's start with a question. Are information technologies bringing any good to education? This was a question uh, stated in a newsletter of UNESCO in 2003, and they pinpointed that it was a chimera to trust in any single technology to transform education. More than that, a bunch of well-chosen technologies could hardly produce any good result if they are not properly backing an effective pedagogical framework. We think that a framework is essential so as to get any benefit from, the, from having the best technologies and having the best means uh, if they are not guided in the right direction. Information technology, it's an evidence, have, have enabled us to gather much more information, to process it better, to disseminate it to anybody in the world, but technologies by themselves will not give us a place in heaven. This is the outline of, of uh, an outline of the presentation. First of all, uh, we are, uh, I am going to speak about uh, the need of a framework for, the le for a learning model so as to support the use of information technologies. I'm going to present briefly the learning model of the University of Deusto. <coughs> and afterwards, I, I, will I will try to, to explain in some words the experience of adapting an LMS to a learning, a learning management system, to a learning model, our learning model. Uh, later, we will talk about the LMS versus Web 2.0 controversia, and uh, our experience with the use of Web 2.0 uh, techniques in in our subjects. And finally, we will we will we will end with some acknowledges. <clears throat> First of all, uh, speaking about our model of learning, we have been working in the University of the Usto developing and implementing during the last year, 10 years uh, our own learning model. It shared its foundations with the Turing Project, which is nowadays uh, well spread around European universities and also in the States, South America, and Africa nowadays. Mm? We, we call the, our learning model the MAUT, Model of Learning University of the Usto, and it's based in autonomous and minimal, meaningful learning, and it's centered in student skills and competencies development. Information technology has been an ally, in, a natural ally in this process of developing competencies in, in our students. It allows teachers and students to be a part of the interaction and monitoring of their learning process. In the chair of Telefonica, we have been involved over the last two years, academic, in several projects uh, with the goal of explore, uh, exploring the, the benefits of the use uh, of using information technology as a supporting tool in the learning process. Uh, briefly, describing our learning model, uh, we, will, we will say that MAUD, our learning model, encourages students' personal development and meaningful learning. Meaningful learning cannot be based merely on the acquisition and repetition of information that has been delivered by someone else, as in previous models. Meaningful learning must involve thinking, must involve observation, contextualization, must involve reflection to help to understand situations and contents. Our model, our learning model, is structured in five stages. The first one is the concrete experience. People do not begin to learn from point zero but from the standpoint of their own language and his own knowledge and experience. The student gets in relation with the topic to be learned, to be studied, standing from his knowledge and experience got beforehand. Motivate the students through his own experience and context. Uh, the idea is to, to get them close to the topic which is going to be uh, studied. 
the key issues here is defining, describing the problem, understanding and sharing the objectives of the training process between the teacher and the students. Several strategies can be used to assist the people to ask the proper questions to, uh, so as to contextualize a particular subject and to link them to other contexts, experiences, future expectations, future labors, question how to learn, question of the subjects, perceptions, and so on. The second stage is the observation, and a reflective observation. It involves knowing how to see, how to open your eyes to see what the reality surrounds you. Question through the reflections, the, the considerations that this observation in the form of ideas, objectives, goals, conducts, means. The student uh, has the responsibility to link the ideas, feelings, value with their own reality and expectation of the way of seeing the world. This phase should help learning things and concepts. Mm? Evidence shows that students have great difficulty to, in asking questions and questioning about themselves and their surroundings. This is a clear indicator of excessive dependence in our models, in our learning models, from their teachers. They are not autonomous. They are not used to be autonomous. The third stage is the con conceptualization. Sorry, thank you. <coughs> the purpose is to learn as deeply as possible all the theoretical positions, questions, bringing the, the study to all the theory developed previously is based on the acquisition of knowledge. It is the most usual in previous, in previous models. It's, the, the, it's common with them. Uh, in this learning problem, there is use of application of cognitive skills, such as understanding, uh, analytic as it's synthetic thinking, critical opinion, uh, and a meaningful learning anyway. Mm? Uh, it helps to uh, structure ideas, uh, principles, theories, linking with another ideas of previous subjects and future subjects. The fourth stage is the experimentation. In Cothers, we link the theory and the practice. It includes any activity that promotes developing skills and abilities on the students in applying concepts, theories of models, with the aim of further strengthening them. Uh, the techniques can be exercises, projects, design. It's especially appropriate this stage for collaborative work, learning to cooperate, and to develop social and interpersonal skills. In this regard, the contributions of LMS and Web 2.0 techniques happen to be a very powerful element in this, in this phase. And finally, the, 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 the last stage is evaluation and assessment. This final evaluation of the result achieved in the learning cycle has several perspectives. First of all, uh, an assessment for the students to reflect what they have learned. A formative dimension, two, that is based on the consideration that as the feedback as an element <coughs> in, the in the study progress. And finally, the evaluation of the work and study of these students as an accountable process. Uh, this learning model has been implemented in an LMS. The boom of information technology has forced the development of virtual education and learning almost in every, almost in every university to gain efficiency principally. <coughs> LMS and those architectures related to the Web 2.0 techniques are the most popular tools in virtual education nowadays, especially the first one. But these advances in information technologies have produced, as well, a great controversy in the education community. Are LMS or Web 2.0 architectures the most appropriate for the learning? Which of them are the most appropriate? University of Bristol has not been. Sorry. <laughs> has not been outside of this discussion. And that's why, from the chair of Telefonica, we have been developing some projects in both directions, just to test the benefits of one or another, or another one, and providing tools and guidance of their use that were helpful, helpful for teachers and students to develop the learning process. The first development of MAUD, of the learning model in the University of the Augusto, was based on an e-learning platform that was built ad hoc at the University in a tool called ALUD. The, de the decision of developing a, an a specific tool and not use a commercial one was due, primary, uh, was due uh, to the primary objective to adopt a e-learning platform 
well, uh, perfectly ad adapted to our learning model. So as not to, add, not to, trans to transform our learning model to the, to the characteristics of the other platform, but in the other sense. Gui and also a tool that guide and support the educator, the educator in the development and conceptualization of her, of her subject, just to force them just to follow uh, the learning model and not to get out of them. More recently, the opportunity of adapting uh, a new LMs, because ALUD has uh, already been uh, obsolete. It, it, it was develop, uh, developed uh, six years ago, so the technology is no longer being uh, useful. And we agreed that the solution should be, should be an open source based. Mm -hmm. Moodle uh, was chosen mainly because it opened to a widespread community and show us to share and exchange materials between, t between teachers. <clears throat> uh, but two elements uh, was, were identified to be added uh, to Moodle. The format of the courses uh, should adapt to the, our learning model. So we need to transform Moodle so as to make uh, the same so as to, ha to, to have this, the, the, same, the same environment that in the previous platform. Mm -hmm. And also the competency assessment that it was not uh, uh, sufficiently developed in, in Moodle in the, in the version we were using in that moment. Mm -hmm. uh, the two things we, uh, as, as I have said, we, we modified or we, we work in Moodle just to transform it was the format and the structure of the courses. Uh, I will say only two, two things. First of all, uh, we force the teachers to follow the five stages in every unit they develop in Moodle so as not to, not to, to permit uh, them just to use the conceptualization, which is the most uh, the most uh, common use in between teachers, but to but to follow five stages, not in the not only in the whole course, but also in every unit developed in in the in the subject, and we have made a special effort so as all materials developed in, in previous in previous version of Alut, so as to to transform it to the new one. Uh, in automatic uh, way. This was a key issue for the success in the adoption of the new platform because uh, several teachers have been working five years in a previous in a previous LMS platform. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, as competencies is uh, the core business of our learning model, uh, the competencies assessment has been one of the main points in the adoption of Moodle. We have defined 21 competencies uh, compri uh, comprised in the, in the framework. Each of them is split in three progressive levels, each one with five indicators and each one with five descriptors to, uh, to, to evaluate them. So we have a framework for the competencies which have been implemented in Alut so that the teachers can use, can use it in, uh, in a very easy way and the, and the students always see uh, uh, a framework which is the same in all. The result has been a new platform, uh, which is which has been testing. Uh, it is we are testing them nowadays. First impressions are excellent, uh, and the experience has been so positive that even some of the technicians. Uh, Encouraged by the university has created a startup just to 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 get benefits not only in the University of the Usta but all in all community of this of this experience. Mm -hmm. This was one of our uh, lines of work: the use of LMS as a, a structure framework to uh, uh, to help teachers and students to in their subjects. But during the last decade, uh, this has been enough. Why all teachers and students have, uh, have found no problem adopting this change from the normal use in, the, in our classrooms and uh, these, virtual, these virtual classes in Moodle? 
because the concepts used in traditional education has been uh, mimic replied in, in Moodle, order, arrangement, evaluation standardized, and so on. But the popularity of Web 2.0 has brought a, a, a new interaction slide, uh, styles between people. Uh, more collaboration, more flexibility, more real time or immediacy. This radical shift has uh, determined that uh, a part of, uh, of, the of the education community uh, asked for another style of, te of techniques, of platforms uh, to be used in their, in their subjects. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the LMS uh, are not flexible enough just to adopt to this new style of interaction. Mm -hmm. And some teachers, uh, fascinated with this new conception of interaction, have decided to rebel against uh, the imposed LMS, uh, those ones we have in, the, in our university as a standard, requiring a more open, agile, and flexible platforms. Mm? Uh, are we moving from a formal education to a more formal education? Uh, are, this is the, the classical debate between a top-down versus bottom-up uh, debate. Uh, is this an intergenerational, intergenerational conflict between uh, young people or not so young people? Mm? Uh, or is it a, a conflict between, between the connectivism versus the constructivism, which is in the, in the foundations of, uh, of Web 2.0 or LMS nowadays? The goal, as I said at the beginning of the Telefonica Chair, uh, is to explore the opportunities of information technologies for the education. So, we promote some experiences in, in the adoption of Web 2.0 technologies uh, in, an, in an intensive way, just to test uh, how can it be used and what benefits they, they produce. And we prepare and offer the students two courses, two subjects, uh, developing, developed intensively in Web 2.0. Intensively is only uh, based in Web 2.0 uh, Web 2.0 techniques. Mm? After two years promoting and developing them, we can conclude that uh, using Web 2.0 applications has been a very positive experience. Uh, it has conduced us to have less lectures, more collaborative, more collaborative world work. Uh, it's very difficult with, sorry, it's very difficult with uh, 50, 60 students as we usually have in our classrooms uh, to have a bidirectional interaction, uh, but this trend can be broken easily with social software, mm? uh, prompting the students just to comment their opinions in blogs, following each other in microblogging networks, or even using them to interact with, with the teachers. Mm? Education 2.0 is more, is more than just adding technology. Teachers become a DJ, they, they, they select which are, which are going to be the materials to be used, uh, to link them, and keeping the students moving, uh, discussing about them. Mm? Content can be self-made by the, by the teacher or can be made mixing, uh, reusing some materials from other people in a not so structured way that in, in previous frameworks. No textbook, instead of working with just one information source, uh, several sources can be, work, can be used. Blogs, microblogs, RSS, multimedia clips, wikis, uh, personal blogs, and the students can organize these personal learning environments freely without being evaluated. Uh, we extend beyond physical boundaries, out of, their, of, out of our classrooms, out of our uh, schedules uh, in the university. Interaction is not longer uh, be limited to the interaction between students and teachers, but other students in other universities, but other teachers in other universities, or other people in the block sphere. Moreover, uh, the teacher is not only the yardstick anymore. Aside from their evaluation with the classroom, the students also receive feedback from other users interacting with these contents they are using. Mm -hmm. And the teacher is not going to be 
uh, the only available data source anymore. They are going to use the sources from the teacher and the sources they found in the, <coughs> in the, in the, in the network or other uh, students uh, found in the network. From a, a non-formal communication, non-formal uh, learning. Mm. Not every student, this is important, is able to discuss a topic in public, but they are usually experts on texting and sending thoughts through mobile phones or through, or through Twitter. The use of Twitter uh, is based in the similar idea. Uh, they freely express their opinions in a more uh, informal way that they will do in our classroom in front of their students and the, and the teacher. Mm -hmm. uh, micro posts can be shown during the class in a less formal way uh, of, par of participation. Mm -hmm. If the privacy of these comments is a problem, uh, you can use another, another tools so as to, to, to get privacy. Mm -hmm. Uh, but in some contexts, uh, Web 2.0 by, by themselves can be considered a problem mm, where someone see flexibility of other ones see lack of control, where, one, where someone see cooperation, collaboration, uh, others see confusion. Not everything is so positive in the experience. Uh, one, of the, one of the things not so positive is the, the lack of order. The course content is not stored in a centralized or a static location anymore. Uh, the content is generated by the teacher, by the students, and is scattered over the internet and must be compiled. So uh, those, who are, those who are not able to find properly and to organize these, these resources uh, have a limited vision of the whole working material. So. It's very important to develop in the students the competencies of mastering aggregation and social bookmark platforms. Otherwise, they are not going to, to have the whole vision of the material in the, in the subject. Lack of control. The teacher lose the control of the, of the, of the subject in, in, in several areas. First of all, in the technical level. They have no, no more the control of the Moodle page, so they arrange everything and, they are, uh, and, the, and he, is, he is sure that everything is working. Uh, it is based on platforms uh, that provide free services and uh, he has no control, neither responsibility of the, of, of the function. And at the social level, uh, the etiquette of the internet cannot be controlled by the teachers. Mm? Their, their authority means nothing out of the, of the institution. So in, in, the, in, in the way of make everything pub public, uh, the opinion of the teacher is one opinion, but it's not the only opinion the students can get uh, about what is being discussed in, in, the, in the classroom. Mm? And of course, spam, uh, cyberbullying uh, and other things uh, when we are using open open networks can happen. Uh, there's a problem of privacy or even limits. Mm -hmm. uh, Web 2.0 platforms promote participation public and, and, and publicate uh, contents, but usually they forget about privacy use, issues. Uh, those information incorrect or medio even mediocre can remain accessible for years, lasting after the end of the others of of, uh, uh, of the academic career of the authors. Maybe we were not very proud of our first uh, working materials in our career uh, 40 years ago, and maybe we we wouldn't like that anyway show us our first uh, working uh, working jobs uh, which are not going to be dis and they are not going to disappear from the from the network in, in years mm -hmm. besides some platforms can 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 apply some restrictions mm, blocking some uses for instance it's not a problem in the university but it's a, it's a problem in primary education uh, in some social networks, uh, the use is prevented uh, between uh, under 16, under 15, under 18 years. So uh, it can be uh, not used 
not useful for primary education. Well, uh, it can be, uh, students can have some confusion on the scope. Mm? If we use the same social networks they use in their, in their private uh, life, uh, they get confused between education and between uh, private life. Mm? Uh, the teachers can be, uh, they are not going to be the best friends of their students, so uh, it's no use of doing it. And finally, maybe these social networks can be a, a source of distraction, a time thief, because it's very useful when, when you are using Facebook to, just to, to use it in, in your subject, in your lectures, you are going sorry, to get confused with, you, with, the, with the interaction with your friends. Some recommendations, just to, to, to finish. Uh, neither students nor teachers have a previous experience in the use of Way 2.0, so some confusion is expected at the beginning of the lecture, of the semester. But usually, students are able to understand the dynamics of the, of the lecture uh, after a few weeks. The use of an homogeneous system as an LMS just to support some parts of the subject of the lecture can, can be very helpful just to not get in, uh, so much confusion. Mm? So we have uh, the first year we don't use it, but the second year uh, we support some parts of the, of the, of the subjects in a classical LMS just to give it uh, uh, some kind of a structure. Mm? Uh, you can use a combination of uh, content center tools managed by teachers and learning and learning center tools managed by students. And the combination of these kind of tools uh, can be a very way, a very good way of uh, of organize the, the lecture. It's essential a framework to be followed. Uh, when you use information technologies. The information technologies are not going to solve the problems of education in any way. They must be supported in, in a model of learning and, and adapt the use of information technology to that model of learning and not in the other, way, not in the other sense. Mm -hmm. The use of an LMS has provided uh, for five years in the University of Deusto that it can provide very good results when, when it's, it's um, it's used with a, with a learning model, and almost 75% uh, of the students nowadays at the university support their, their lessons in, in this LMS. Mm -hmm. It has been, uh, it, it was not very easy in the, in the first stages of the, of the use of LMS, but nowadays uh, almost uh, everyone uh, is, even, even those who don't use it, don't use it yet, uh, are beginning to, to use in the in the lessons in the mod, in the Bologna process. Mm -hmm. uh, I must say that uh, the University of Deusto is mainly a university of social sciences and not engineer uh, and not engineer. So uh, it's it may be not the same in all universities. Mm -hmm. Web Web 2.0 tools has also happened to be a good mate, but anyway, it requires that students and teachers have. Uh, have uh, technical competencies. It's very important. Otherwise, it's going to be only lack of control. And uh, of course, uh, we think that educational objectives will not, will not be uh, get. Uh, nevertheless, this is not going to last forever. And from the chair of Teleponica, we are keeping on experimenting, implementing, and developing tools and technologies to help educators. Mm -hmm. This is going to be a very long way so as to, uh, to, to promote the use of information technologies and to give the tools to the teachers to use it in a very effective way. Mm -hmm. These first stages has been uh, successful with, uh, st with teachers and students in computer science, in engineering, where they have com uh, t com uh, technical competencies before uh, when they use in the in the in the lectures, but it's uh, it's it has been not the same in in all the areas. Mm -hmm. uh, acknowledge conclusions. I will uh, I would like to see that uh, th all these processes have been have been pushed 
by our Vice Rector for Innovation, Aurelio Villa, which is the alma mater of all, all this process. Uh, not only in the in the learning model and with the with the development of competencies, competencies assessment, but also in the application of information technology uh, to the to the education. Uh, people from the Un Institute of Educational Sciences and the faculty engineer, which, which has been the the students and the teachers, uh, which has worked more in the developing of these of these uh, subjects and 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 this and and the evolution of the LMS and Web 2.0 tools, and also uh, I acknowledge to Telefonica because with their support we can be we can have a, a very good experience in these two years. So as as a, start, as a starting point of <coughs> developing in massively in, in the University of Houston and. Thanks to the audience for for your attention and and especially for the patience, uh, especially for the <laughs> the problems with with the uh, with the two PCs using uh, at the same time. Okay, thank you, Sir Luis. Uh, you have any question or comment for this presentation? You have one. You mentioned uh, before Twitter. Uh, it's one of the tools we use for now everywhere. And uh, in this environment of education at uh, 2.0, uh, you have any idea of that, though, that the data, sorry, uh, about how uh, uh, people in, uh, in your university are using Twitter. And uh, based on your research, uh, what do you think uh, will be the future? Do you see the classroom uh, with uh, plenty of people using the mobile phones and Twitter uh, everywhere? Well, in, uh the last figures we, we have for for the students with which uh, has incorporated to the university this year, uh, they use Twitter in 70 percent, uh, at least they declare it. Uh, I have some experience of using Twitter in, in, in my own in my own class, and I have the experience of a lack of control and lack of form. Uh, I don't really know if uh, anyone was. Uh, was listening to me, uh, or was uh, reading uh, micro micro blogging posts. Uh, any of the students were writing in the very moment. Anyone was writing with his uh, laptop, uh, commenting what, what I was saying, and I I can find smiles. Uh, and I don't know if the smile of the student is because what I am saying, because what she's uh, reading. I must say uh, what was it they are commenting. You must be very careful in the use of these of these techniques in in the class, and it can be uh, very useful in those subjects in which uh, opinions, uh, collaboration, uh, small opinions uh, are important. But in in another parts of the of the subject, there's no there's no way of using it, and to get benefit of of those. Uh, spontaneous uh, opinions of the students. So uh, you must be very, very, very careful because you can sp spend uh, uh, half an hour or an hour and to get no result of of of, of that of that uh, use. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it's it's very useful uh, for when you finish your your class. The discussion can continue in a in a very informal, but but not but not in the in here. Uh, I would say if any one of you could be uh, commenting and uh, uh, he has forgot to, to pass the slide. Uh, and, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, so it can be a, a problem of lack of order. Especially when there are many students. It's not the same as you have 15 students, 10 students, uh, but in, in that case, maybe Twitter has, has no sense because with five students, it's easy to just to, 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 to ask or to comment one by one. Uh, sure. You, 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 <coughs> you already mentioned that this kind of uh, tools may be more appropriate for uh, uh, some disciplines. You, mm -hmm. you mentioned those toys mostly uh, social, social sciences. Sense. But you also have uh, engineering yeah. at school. Then could you comment a little bit more on this? Mm -hmm. if this? This kind of tools may be more appropriate, let's say, for some disciplines or for some particular classes or uh, what you it, it's more appropriate for some disciplines 
not engineer usually. <laughs> uh, it's, it's very appropriate for social sciences, especially in those areas in which uh, it's very important to, to the controversy and to, and to discuss about the themes and the different opinions, different point of views of the same things. But it's easier in, it's easier in engineering because of the uh, technical competencies the students already have. Uh, uh, there are uh, a problem of what, what difficulties find the teacher and the students in the using of the technology, and the other one is the, the appropriate, uh, how, how, in which way the techniques are more appropriate. Uh, so we have a very good experience in, in some area of psychology, of education, and so on, in the use of technology. Uh, after passing the, the, the threshold of uh, students to be competent enough in, in, in the use of information technology so, so as to, to get benefits of, the, of these tools. Well. Um, are you aware of um, the, there is a website called uh, Botipedia that you can use to yeah. make an English of it? Mm -hmm. We, um, in fact, uh, I'm, I know it. Uh, the people who, who usually uh, who is in charge of these subjects uh, should uh, must must be here. But today is in, in Granada. But maybe we, we can be touched. We we have uh, tried to use almost everything in this in this concrete subject. We have discussed some of them. We have uh, several. If, if you are interested, I can put in contact with with Pablo, and he will he will give you all uh, all his impressions with. with uh, those things that he has uh, used with success or not success. Hmm? I have a curiosity. Uh, you say in your, uh, in your paper that uh, educators will be as DJ. Mm -hmm. uh, I understand that they are these people that are mixing songs in the disco. Yeah. That's the idea. You are not going to use any longer a textbook. But you are going to to select things of the of, of information and just to put at the service of the of the students so as to use them and to and, and to command it. Uh, we have started in uh, what we call an an opac uh, um, uh, a ticketing of the books in in our library so as which part of the of the books are useful for you or not for you and so as to comment the the, the materials the the, the teacher uh, give to the students uh, even some of the materials i i put uh, i give to the students they 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 say me i have found in the network a much much better material than than yours and usually they they are right they are much better so uh, the idea is uh, just to start the music and and let them to play to, to play with the music and they are, they they must be the the objective is they must be autonomous they must learn to learn so the idea is just to start and 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 let them playing playing with them that's the that's the idea i know i'm not the the idea of dj may be appropriate for the academic institution or not but in this informal way okay uh, thank you very much uh, thank you and the yes. second presentation uh, will be made by Luis uh, Lofer, uh, coming from the UPC, uh, Universidad Politecnica de Catalunya. Uh, I, I was speaking with uh, Luis before uh, about uh, why uh, ICT, information and communication technologies, are growing. Uh, we have new tools, we have new applications, are exploding, in fact. And uh, why are uh, mm, Location for uh, for a study in a university, the uh, ICTs is the uh, Maybe after listening to the presentation, we will know. Uh, thank you. Good morning. Uh, the presentation deals with the ways to attract students into engineering careers, careers, and in particular. I'll tell you something about a particular program that comes from the combination of kind of engineering and Catalonia, Catalonia Promotional and Prospective Plan. Uh, then uh, we mix both things. First, uh, we'll give you some quantitative figures, then some, we'll comment some on some com qualitative aspects, and finally, I'll commend you some initiative 
into this uh, program to promote engineering studies. Then, uh, first at all, let me uh, just comment on the particular share, telephonic share, we have at the Universita Politecnica de Catalonia. Then, this share is, uh, the name is uh, uh, Analysis of the Evolution and Future Tendencies of Our so Society. Then, inside this uh, prospective study, Sher tries to look at how things evolve and how the main uh, social aspects would interact with, uh, let's say, new technology somehow. Then, uh, one of the main aspects is to know how our, our young people would see, would look, would prepare themselves to afford all those, let's say, new challenges. Then let me start uh, with the origin of this particular uh, program. Uh, then if you look at it, just uh, the, the names here, sorry, are in Spanish or in Catalan. Uh, let, just look at the total, that's the line in brown. And this is from 2000 to 2008. And this is in a percentual scale, the number of youngs demanding for a studying engineering degrees in Catalonia. That's Catalonia, but maybe perfectly extend apply to Spain. And probably not all the Western countries, but some of them at least. At European scale, probably it's almost certain also. Then look at the brown, you move from 100 in 2000 to, uh, let's say, percentually to 75% in 2008. Then you see kind of average slope, negative one. If you look at it a little bit more quantitatively, you find that in general, engineering vocations are falling at a rate of more or less 3% yearly. This 3% behind it, there are two main reasons. Demographic variation, that's 1%, no more, and then there is the additional 2% are strictly related to this kind of engineering. That's in general, but if you look at a specific engineering, numbers may be much more uh, severe. For example, if you look to at the uh, telecom and computer science on violet, you see that the slope is stronger. The slope here is 5-6%. Then something is going on among our young uh, population for not choosing those kind of studies. And that was the concern because that was a data and another data was companies asking for more engineering graduates. That was 2007. Then it looked like kind of a crash was approaching because number of entering was decreasing and the demand at that time and even again uh, were increasing. That, that was the first concern. But let's just give us uh, some quantitative figures. Uh, we try to compare with some uh, international reference in order to be sure that we were not looking at very, very, very particular uh, behaviors. Then uh, you see that's population from 1996, let's say 15 years ago, to uh, 2020, let's say 10 years ahead. There are, for 10 years ahead, probably you can have certain inaccuracies due to the new coming population, but uh, still. Then you see, uh, for example, at European level, it's not a surprise that the uh, population somehow is decreasing, except for the immigration. But in general, that was the tendency. You could look, for example, at uh, Japan. Japan is, look, it's, it's huge, the decreasing. Or you could look at Spain, uh, Spain at, uh, from the, you see, from uh, 1996 till 
2006 was decreasing and then the last three years, the last three, sorry, lines are more or less stable. Then uh, even a certain increment. But what we have to know, looking at it, is that the population would don't, the, the, the population won't increase so much as to compensate the decreasing we saw a moment ago. Then let's keep in mind that uh, we have to increase the number of vocations coming more or less from a stable uh, population. That's the first detail. Then that's, uh, let's look at the science and engineering student evolution, most, more specifically to this, uh, to this population. Again, uh, in fact, when you look, you can, may see that there are different kind of different cycles. There are some countries that uh, had a certain evolution and some countries that will have this evolution later. Uh, for example, uh, you may see uh, into the USA, uh, here we have science and engineering, not just engineering. When you, in science, you, are, you have all the biology that's really uh, strongly increasing. That may uh, change a little bit, but look at the uh, United States, how the population looks increasing. Japan, really very stable. Germany, and that's right, it's increasing, uh, certainly, even in engineering again. Or in Spain, where, that where uh, the, the figures look like decreasing. That's till 2006. That's why I told you that the, 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 the figures we saw for Catalonia may we extend it to Spain. Then that's, that's the actual situation in general. Uh, and then uh, Catalonia is also uh, as, as Spain. But uh, look, for example, at Finland. Finland has is a, you know, a six million size country with very clear vision on the technology. Then their numbers on science and technology are, uh, uh, in fact, uh, high. And you can look not just at, to the evolution, but to the absolute values. Because those values are, in order to be able to compare, that, uh, those are the, uh, the uh, number of students per million of inhabitants. Then look at Finland. Finland, they have 20,000 uh, students per million of, of uh, population. Instead, Spain has half of it. Then is there not just the total number, not, not the evolution, sorry, but also the total number. Then we should have some concern. Then let's say something about, uh, let's say, more uh, internal details. Then what's the percentage of youngsters just completing high school somehow. And then, again, we see that uh, for the particular case of Spain, we have some, uh, let's say, differences. In fact, when you look at it, that's percentual, you may see that, let's say, more advanced countries as France, 80% of the youngsters complete high school. In Spain, it's uh, 60%, just 20% lacking. Then that's a major problem. And you know what? That's important because this missing population is not filling the professional study somehow. Then we have in our uh, Spanish population uh, the number of uh, professional qualification we produce per million of inhabitants is half the European one. Then that's a real big difference. Then, and what about qualitative? That's a European uh, test called PISA that measures the proficiency of the students on math, social sciences, natural sciences, and things like this. And then, again, you see uh, uh, this scale is measured in a quantitative scale up to uh, 500 something. Then, again, you see, for example, in Spain, both in Catalonia is the same, uh, uh, Japan is the same, how the uh, things move on. You may compare 2000, 2003, 2006. Every three years, we get uh, results. Then uh, very soon, we'll get 2009 results, and we'll see. But the problem is not to get just the value, uh, 470, but also if you look from 2003 to 2006, how those values decrease again. 
there is controversies about those numbers because there are uh, people saying that those tests are more appropriate for Nordic people than for Southern people, but uh, still, they are there. Um, and then an additional, uh, I would say engineering, but in particular Spanish problem, is the number of students completing the engineering degrees. We took, that's a, a very long study, we took a promotion from 2000 to 2007 of students entering into the engineering degrees. That was in Catalonia, but I would say Spain would be the same. And then we, we followed them during seven, eight years, and we look at the end. And then we saw that from those 100 students, 42% completed in more or less the, the reasonable time. And then for the remaining 60%, uh, 20% change from field. It's okay. It's natural. 20% uh, they are still into the system. Uh, you know, after eight years, they are still keeping trying. That's, it's okay, but not so normal, because normal duration is just uh, four or five years. But let's say okay, and 20% drop off. Then when you look at it, you may see that 20% uh, uh, change, it's okay. And let's say that half of those 20% will finish at the end. Then you have just 50%. You see the efficiency of the system is not so good. We know that engineering degrees are complicated. Uh, and uh, that's right, but uh, still 50% when we have a lack of, of graduates could be a problem. And then uh, that's the graduation rates uh, when you compare, again, different countries. That's, again, its absolute values. That's the number of... Uh, uh, graduates per 1,000, somehow, population from 20 to 29. Uh, it's not so important, the, 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 the scale, but you can compare among the different countries. And again, you see that it's not so bad uh, when you compare. There are countries as France or as Ireland or as uh, Finland where the numbers are higher. Spain is not so bad. The little problem when you look from 2001 to 2005 is that the numbers are decreasing. And then that's, that's the problem. And then this is the, that's the forecast for the needs uh, for uh, professionals on engineering. Uh, here you have on now, that were the numbers for uh, Catalonia that uh, we more or less had. That's 100,000 professionals in the different engineering uh, areas. In fact, if we would like to have in Catalonia, the, in average, the same number of professional per million of, uh, of inhabitants that the European level, we have to have uh, 110,000, 10,000 more. And if we would like to approach the more advanced countries, that's always a dream, we, we should have 130. Then, you know, we are not very good places, it's still okay, it's not far away. But if we don't do anything, if we just let the, the things go ahead, in uh, five years would be, you know, the, the number of uh, graduates, uh, the professionals, had been reduced, and the need from the so uh, society would have increased. Then we have to do something. That's, that's the... Um, and another different, let me comment on this, is when you look at the uh, different uh, level of uh, university degrees, when you compare bachelor, uh, here in Spain right now it's called graduate, the master and the PhD. And you see that, for example, in the States, there is a very clear pyramid uh, on the bachelor, master's, and PhD. France is not so clear, uh, Germany even less. Uh, Spain, you see, we produce in percentage and in absolute value much more masters compared to the States. Then that's important because, you know, uh, uh, master degrees, when they go to the market, they wait for a master work. And then, if the market is not ready to offer appropriate jobs, it produces a negative feedback. Then that's really important as a country to think on those kind of things. And uh, another difference, I, I want to uh, stay on this, is uh, the, the, the number of grants for students. Uh, Spain is not, a, uh, is not having a, a very clear politics on grants. In fact, what Spain does is, uh, uh, let's say, approaching universities to the students more than giving grants to the students to move to the university. That's kind of a social politics, could be okay, but it's a reality. And then uh, an aspect is the presence of women. 
Women, as you know, uh, in the different science and uh, engineering studies, here is mixed, then the difference is not so serious, but that's a worldwide problem also, how many women are into the, into the engineering studies. Probably, uh, in most of the cases, they are below 20 percent. That's especially important, as you were saying, because uh, women is 50 percent, but there is an additional reason, uh, that nowadays the top uh, high school marks, more and more, at are being get, get got by the women. Then if the engineering studies are not able to, to attract women, we are losing 50% and we are losing the very best marks. Uh, then there is a double problem here. And uh, let's, uh, let's just, how, why the, the, the youngsters, uh, how the youngsters feel about the engineering or about the different projects. Uh, that's, uh, we took it from a European study and we see what's the, pers what's the feeling of the youngsters for the different, uh, pro uh, let's say, uh, studies. You see the, the more uh, top ranked is medicine, then scientists, engineers are not so bad, but 30% uh, clearly below half of the medicine, then judges, then sportives and artists. When you do these statistics in Spain, by the way, uh, a sportist just jump till 50%. That's real. That's real. Uh, then the reason for lack of interest towards science and technology, probably you know, that's European barometer cult. And uh, the reasons uh, you know, low attractivity for the science and technology lessons. Then as a second reason, the difficulty. As a third one, salaries. And uh, for one, the interest of the subjects in itself. It looked like a students at the end say the effort I have to do is not compensated by the reward, not just salary, but the social re reward I, I get back from, uh, from. Then, based on all this stuff, uh, and on all these questions, we try to organize kind of uh, governmental program to, to promote. And then we thought that in order to afford the system, we had to look at the three levels uh, to really do a solid approach to the problem. We had to look at the pre-university level to explain to the youngs what the engineering is. Then at the university level, we have to attack the problems we saw, the efficiency, and then modernizing the curricula. And then at the end, we had to, uh, to afford the problem of uh, inserting these people into the, into the professional market. This morning, I attended a session at the University of Texas where they were created uh, in their continuing engineering education, they created kind of a, the, the name was, I thought it was interesting, was Engineering Leadership Institute. In order to give to the engineering uh, uh, graduates communication and social skills in, uh, to, uh, to interact better with society. And then we, we, we try to create uh, programs in each of those. And then I, I, I won't go into details, but uh, uh, yeah, uh, we thought that the program may be successful if we concentrated just in a very few uh, initiatives. In fact, we are just promoting uh, those uh, uh, nine initiatives. We, we asked a company to produce a very short five-minute video. The video was okay. We got uh, we distributed, and we got uh, something like 20,000 visits. That for us was okay because the, 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 the Catalan population going to the university it's uh, around uh, 50,000, then 20% of this 50,000 is 10% that the candidates for engineering, and we, saw, we, saw, well, we said uh, 20,000 was okay. But at the same time, the, a school of uh, industrial engineering from Madrid produced a video. Uh, they did the students themselves and they distribute to, to, to Yahoo. They got 400,000 visits, then lesson learned, let the youngs produce material for young, for young people. Then that's the first thing. The second one, then, we have been producing material for the young uh, people in order to explain engineering degrees in a more actual way. That's the first kind of initiative. The second one is just to approach science and technology to the students. Uh, and we are doing two different ways. We are uh, just approaching uh, robotics experiences into the, in all the high schools in, 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 the, in the region. Uh, more than 700 high schools. We have been visiting all the high schools with a two-hour 
experience, and we have been organizing summer camps. That has been very successful. Then, uh, then finally, we have convinced our, let's say, governor, regional governor, just to collect all the young pre-university students being awarded with some science and technology prize to, to collect them and to, to, to recognize all these people. Uh, and really, we got a very good, uh, uh, let's say, a social response. And then we go uh, into the university. We have uh, two uh, main things. One is uh, the, the promote kind of a grant for mentoring. A students from the last uh, engineering courses just mentor a students from the first courses. It works uh, uh, properly. And then a second one is uh, we think that the best way to explain what engineering is to the young students is try to translate projects going on into the university, into the high schools. Then you know that all the university engineering graduates, either ma a bachelor or master, they have to do a final project. Then we are trying to connect those uh, final uh, projects to the re initial research projects that the high school students have to do. In particular, we are trying to share uh, university experience with high school experiences. In fact, one of the things we plan to do related with the Telefonica share, Telefonica uh, has a very useful tool called uh, Mobile Forum that allows companies to experiment new uh, tools for new, let's say, uh, communicational applications. Then there are different projects done at the university level related with these things. Then we are, we are trying to connect those tools with the higher schools. Then the, the, the idea is just to bring what the engineering studies is to the higher school. And then the, 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 the action number eight is just to try to define what would be engineering in 2020. We have to explain youngs what would be the engineering. We have to try to, to give a, 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 a vision more clearly oriented towards solving the social challenges. Then uh, I'll give you uh, w here, we think that we absolutely need to bring women to the engineering studies. And the single way, the natural proportion is 50%, 50% males and women. And then one of the main things, one of the single ways to solve this problem is to modernize the engineering degree uh, subjects and contents. Then we think that there is plenty. I, I, uh, mm, I, I, I did a sabbatical state at the University of California some years ago, and then they had the same problem we have here. Then the number of women into the engineering studies was 16, 20 percent. But uh, during that year, they created a new engineering studies, was bioengineering. And then they created percentage of women was 50 percent, 50 percent. Then clearly, the subject, the matter, the orientation uh, is important. And finally, action number nine, uh, uh, there is uh, to give to the students uh, leading and communication skills. Okay, we are running all these programs. Uh, that's just uh, marketing of the summer camps. Uh, that's uh, uh, marketing of the experiences we bring to all the institutes, the high schools. And then, uh, right now, we try to create this new message, the reasons to become an engineer. Uh, uh, become an engineer, we try to, to explain them that's a way to be an active protagonist of nowadays, leading development, increasing job opportunities, and innovating what we have around. We have to, uh, to, in to increase. And then engineering has to be a way of uh, solving big challenges. When you look at the engineering uh, in the 20th century, uh, we, we may see that we, engineering has been able to solve the main social problems as electrification or water or medical diagnosis or uh, uh, highways or, uh, or uh, of uh, industrialization manufacturing. But we have a new set of challenges. You can put uh, your uh, vision, and that's why, again, the telephonic share is there just to try to look 
what are the real new challenges? And we have to explain to our young people they, that they should be able to answer, to, to give responses to the new sources of energy, uh, the environment, the virtual presences, and uh, uh, the, the, the new need for food, for manufacturing, and, and all these things. Just to finish, that's the last one. Then what we got after one year? Uh, then if you look this, there is one more year, 2009. And then when you look to the green uh, uh, line, then after 10 years of decreasing numbers, the, for the first time we got an increase, 11%. That's not due to the program. <laughs> uh, we, kept, we keep saying that the program at least doesn't make this impossible. What I'm trying to say, something is happening. I think that our youngs are just rethinking the way they afford the future. That's one change. The second one is uh, the second one, and it happens in mostly all the studies. And the second main conclusion is we are looking at the young, uh, high school, let's say, uh, people looking at science and technology. The number of women being interested for science and technology is really something is happening. Our young women are looking at it in a new way. Let's see this in, uh, this in uh, coming years. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Luis. Uh, you, made, you made a very uh, uh, in-depth study. In Do you have any question or comment about the presentation? I wonder if you study the impact of this uh, the current time with the crisis, the financial crisis, if uh, they have uh, any impact in your data? Look, um, what we know is uh, we look at the different, mainly European countries, the way how the country was affording the crisis moment and how the demand for engineering studies reacted. And then, for example, we saw that Germany start looking at the economical crisis before that Spain, because crisis arrived in Germany before, with three, four years. Then when you look to the engineering demand, you may see in Germany an increase that shifted with respect to the Spanish one in the same way that crisis impact is shifted. Then it looks like different countries, the increase on engineering demand somehow is correlated with the way that crisis impact each country, certainly. So thank you, thank you. I think we have to stop here right now. Uh,